Thank you. Uh, we now move to topical questions. I call question one, Willie Coffey, please. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what support will be given to families and communities affected by the liquidation of Scottish coal. Minister Fergus Ewing. Uh, presenting officer, news of the liquidation of SRG will be a hammer blow to many rural areas in Scotland. The Scottish Government will give every support possible to families and communities affected by the events at SRG and to the sustainable operation of the coal industry in Scotland. Building on the work carried out with the coal industry over the past months, a task force is being assembled, which I will chair, which will pull together all relevant parties concerned in maintaining a sustainable Scottish coal industry. I wish this task force presiding officer to include MSPs from all the main opposition parties and have already had informal conversations with the three party leaders to that effect. I have spoken with KPMG. I welcome their initial view that it is still possible that mining operations will continue. I am continuing this dialogue with KPMG. My officials have spoken with affected councils. I am meeting uh, with East Ayrshire Council after this session. I am meeting with the trade unions tomorrow, 24th April, uh, uh, to ascertain what further assist assistance may be provided. Our main goal in our discussions with all relevant parties is to retain as many Scottish coal jobs as is possible. On 8th of March, at the beginning of the consultation process, through our PACE initiative, we offered support to the Scottish Resources Group for employees who may be facing redundancy. SRG declined this offer as they felt it was too early in the consultation process for PACE support to be accepted. Last Friday, the 19th of April, the date of the liquidation, presiding officer, we again offered support through administrators KPMG for employees who had been made redundant on Friday, uh, and we are continuing to work very closely with KPMG to provide support for those affected employees. This morning, my officials have spoken with KPMG, uh, and I can confirm plans are underway for four events to assist those employees who have been made redundant. Skills Development Scotland is coordinating these events, which will take place in Ayrshire, Lanarkshire, Alloa, and Fife. PACE partnership organisations will be present to offer help to affected employees who will each receive an invitation to these events, two of which are provisionally scheduled for next week. We are aiming to hold the other events, of course, as soon as possible. We will also provide support on site for those employees who have been retained. We share the concerns of local communities around the responsible restoration of open cast coal sites, and we are setting up the Scottish Mines Restoration Trust the SMRT to help facilitate the restoration of old open cast mine, coal mines across Scotland. Whilst our main concern is to ensure responsible restoration of open cast sites, the restoration process is itself, residing officer, over time expected to create potentially hundreds of jobs across the country. The new SMRT will engage with local councils, landowners and coal operators, pulling all relevant parties together to ensure the best possible outcome for local communities and the effective restoration of old open cast mines. Uh, finally, we have also provided £2.5 million in funding uh, from 2011 to 2014 to assist the Coalfield Regeneration Trust deliver their services within former coalfield communities. We are continuing to support the CRT to become a self-sustaining organisation so that it can continue to meet the needs of former coalfield communities. Thank you. Willie Coffey. I thank the Minister for that very detailed response, and I believe a task force is exactly the measure that is needed here. Um, I certainly look forward to contributing to that on behalf of constituents affected by this news, and I am sure my fellow members, Ms. Eileen Campbell and others in the Chamber, and those members for constituencies and regions, will support the Scottish Government's efforts in preserving jobs and businesses in this important Scottish sector. Could the Minister give any further details, please, on the, on the PACE efforts that might provide some support to, to directly affected members in the short term? Minister? Uh, well, I acknowledge that Willie Coffey uh, has uh, uh, advocated the interests of those in the communities in his part of Scotland uh, who rely on their livelihood for open cast coal mining. And I also acknowledge the active engagement of Aileen Campbell in her constituency of Clydesdale and also members across parties uh, who have been making very strong representations to me, irrespective of party 
politics. Um, the jobs in the coal mining sector in Scotland are good jobs. They provide a very good salary. The average, I'm told, is £42,000. There are 4,500 jobs in Scotland. Uh, it, the sector contributes £450 million a year to the economy. So this is a vibrant sector, professionally run, to the highest standards of operation. And the task force uh, has been set up by myself, and Professor Russell Griggs will play, continue to play a, a, a major part in the work going forward, precisely because we are determined to do everything possible to preserve open-cast coal mining in Scotland, and working together, as we will do in this task force cross-party, I think that there are many opportunities to do good for Scotland uh, and to help sustain many of the jobs in those areas that Mr Coffey and others represent. Thank you. Mr Coffey, you don't have another question? Very, very thankful to the Minister for that full and detailed response, and I, I particularly hope that the efforts, particularly in the short term, the pace efforts, are actually absolutely crucial at this early stage, and I welcome the Minister's commitment to actually engage in that process. Thank you. Claire Baker, please. Um, thank you, Deputy President Officer. I welcome the Minister's comments on the steps being taken to support those who are facing the threat of redundancy, but the Minister will also be aware of concerns over the restoration of the St Ninian site based outside Kelty and the completion of a significant land arts project that is ongoing there. Um, can I ask what discussions the Minister has been able to have with Fife Council over ensuring that this work is completed? Minister? Uh, well, well I, I, I acknowledge clear Baker's interest in this, and I, I agree with the remarks about uh, Kelty, uh, and indeed it's an extremely exciting renovation scheme uh, involving, as it does, constructing a map of Scotland, I think, upon it. Um, the discussions have been taking place over a long period with Scottish Government officials and Professor Russell Griggs, dealing directly with all of the councils affected. That work will continue, and it will continue uh, now that the SMRT has been established. I should make it clear, presiding officer, that this new body will largely be a, a facilitating body, not a funding body. It is not designed to remove, to elide, to dis extinguish the obligations of the companies themselves. Plainly, they have primary responsibilities to fulfil, and that will remain the case, and rightly so, for very obvious reasons. But I am convinced that we need to work better together, to work more closely together, not simply to leave each instance to an individual local authority, and that there are matters involving dealing with SEPA, dealing with SNH, dealing with uh, NGOs, and of course, above all, dealing with communities, which require an element of coordination and joint working uh, that I'm satisfied will derive from the efforts of the SMRT going forward. Uh, and that is why, presiding officer, I'm very keen that the task force should have on it uh, representatives from all the three main uh, opposition parties, as well as MSPs from the government party on it to assist in that work. Thank you. Mr. Fraser. Uh, thank you. Can I uh, uh, welcome the Minister's announcement of the creation of a task force which will be appreciated by constituents of mine and Fife who are uh, affected by the liquidation of Scottish coal? Would the Minister acknowledge we are in a bizarre situation where we have sky-high energy prices hitting industry and driving nearly 40 per cent of households into fuel poverty at the same time as we have an abundant low-priced source of energy in coal. Can you tell us what ideas the Scottish Government has to try and square this circle? Minister? Um, well, the, uh, as Mr Fraser, I, I, I think, will know, the main problem affecting the coal industry has been the world price and the fall, in particular, of, of coal prices over the past three years. Uh, and that has been a result of a number of factors which I think are, with respect, out with uh, Mr Fraser's control and out with my control. Uh, that has been the problem, that, that the cause that has led to the financial difficulties. Uh, and what we seek to do is to provide every possible means of support for the sector that we can. That is why, for example, we have been doing several things, but two in particular over the past 12 months. Uh, I was satisfied after representations uh, from uh, uh, directors of SRG uh, uh, that the carbon reduction commitment was an unreasonable uh, burden upon the industry and uh, in discussion and after a long series of protracted negotiations with DEC, which were successful, and I thank Greg Barker for his constructive input, we were able to extinguish that liability which should never have arisen in the first place. So 
To that extent, and there were several million pounds involved, we were able to be of practical assistance through pretty detailed and concerted joint working that's been going on over the past 12 months. There is, however, another uh, threat facing the sector at this time, and here I, I would be grateful for Mr Fraser's support, perhaps uh, with the UK Government, and that is that the Office of Rail Regulator has proposed that freight charges for the coal sector are being proposed to be increased in just a few years' time by £4 a tonne. Well, if it's not possible or extremely difficult to trade profitably at the moment, how on earth will the open cast sector be able to face this additional imposition of additional costs at the very time when they need concerted support? So Keith Brown met with the ORR last week, uh, and we will continue to make strong representations to tackle that problem uh, and be of every possible support we can to the open cast sector in Scotland. Thank you. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too welcome the task force. The Minister may be aware that the trade unions have concerns about the communication coming both from the company and government to them, and I very much welcome the talks that he announced that he's going to hold with the trade unions tomorrow. Um, they are, after all, the representatives of the workforce and have got good communications with the workers there. Can I ask what steps he'll be taking to keep them up to speed in the future, and will he indeed include them in the task force that he's setting up today? Minister. Uh, well, I've always found input from the trade union representatives to be invaluable in those task forces with which I have been involved. This will be no exception. Uh, I will be meeting Graham Smith and uh, I hope Nicky Wilson of the NUM tomorrow. We will be extending invitations that the STUC should take up uh, at least two places on the task force. We will discuss with them, of course, what the appropriate representation it should be. It is for them to nominate, I think, and we will be happy to benefit from their input on the task force. Uh, that will be an invaluable part of our work, which I anticipate will take several months. Willie Rennie, briefly, please. Um, thank you, Deputy President Officer. Um, the Minister will recognise there was quite a lot of opposition to, in certain communities to open cast being developed in their communities. Um, the reputation of the industry was improving, although it had a poor reputation in the past. What assurances can he give me that he will work on making sure that that reputation will be restored? Because otherwise, we won't have an open cast industry for people locally to support. Minister. Well, well we want to do everything possible to, uh, to ensure that the industry enjoys as high a reputation as possible. I mean, I, I do know that in many parts of Scotland, they are just an integral part of the rural community. 709 jobs in East Ayrshire, 312 in South Lanarkshire, 147 in Fife, and there's the subcontractors as well in, in haulage and other support services. But we want the reputation to, uh, to, to, to be as high as possible. And I would point out to Mr Rennie that I have here examples of good restorations of previous open cast sites well carried out in East Ayrshire and Garlefin and in Haniston near Drongan, for example. And that's resulted from the close working that we now envisage the SMRT, Professor Russell Griggs in particular, will be taking forward. And I hope that that work will help us enhance the reputation of the sector going forward. Thank you. Question two, Richard Baker. Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the latest State of Trade survey. Secretary Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, we take very seriously the latest quarterly survey, survey from the Federation of Master Builders, although it is worth pointing out that it contrasts with some other recent surveys, for example, the Scottish Construction Monitor, which reported a slight rise in confidence in quarter one of this year. It is also important to note that in the FMB survey, Scotland's net balance, i.e. the difference between those reporting higher and those reporting lower workloads, in the first quarter of this year has improved compared to quarters three and four of last year. However, as I said, we take this survey seriously, which is why we continue to do everything possible to maximise capital investment, to reform and simplify procurement processes and to argue for a shift in UK economic policy. Members should also be aware that the specific policy demand made yesterday by the FMB was for a cut by the UK Government in the rate of VAT for home renovations and repairs, a policy that this Government has previously lobbied the UK Government to introduce. Thank you. Richard Baker. And we've also agreed uh, with the Cabinet Secretary on that policy, and I'm pleased she's taken the report seriously. But why does she think it is the case that the Federation finds the situation for small building firms significantly worse in Scotland than in the rest of the UK, and what action will the Scottish Government take to address this issue? Um, Secretary. Well, 
Can I point Richard Baker back to some of the facts in my previous answer? Uh, the situation uh, is one we should take seriously, and I want to make that very clear. Uh, but the situation, uh, as reported in the quarter one of this year, has actually improved on quarters three and four uh, of last year. Uh, indeed, the situation in quarter uh, one of this year compares favourably to some uh, regions in England. Now, none of that is uh, an argument for complacency. In terms of the action uh, that we are taking, uh, in spite of the cuts to our capital budget, we will in this financial year invest £3.4 billion in capital investment of the uh, £2.5 billion NPD programme. £1.7 billion of that is now in procurement or development. Uh, as I said in my answer, and as we as a, a parliament debated just last week, we're taking steps to simplify and procure uh, and uh, reform procurement uh, processes. And indeed, one of the announcements I made last week to pilot project bank accounts is something that has significant benefits for the smaller uh, suppliers in the construction supply chain. So this government is taking action on a range of fronts, but we will continue to do so. Uh, and I would hope to get uh, support from the member when I also say that we will continue to argue for a more sensible economic approach from the UK government. Shabaker, briefly, please. Certainly support that argument, but as a number of areas which still cause difficulty for the sector, uh, the lack of delivery through the MPD programme, which the Cabinet Secretary is well aware of, and also it shows a situation for these firms are much better in Wales. They are taking a different approach to procurement, including far greater use of community benefit clauses. Will these be used more widely in the future on projects like the AWPR, and will they feature in the forthcoming procurement bill, having a new emphasis on community benefit when that legislation is brought forward? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I say that um, on, on procurement, if I can uh, take that issue first of all, we will look to learn from anywhere that has lessons uh, to teach us, but I will uh, happily send uh, Richard Baker some uh, statistics to uh, illustrate the point that if you look at, for example, the uh, public contract Scotland figures that we published last week with the percentage uh, of contracts uh, advertised through the portal that are going to small businesses and indeed to small businesses based in Scotland, we actually perform very favourably to other parts of the UK. I've uh, read quotes in recent times from some uh, Welsh politicians saying that uh, they should be looking to Scotland. Now, you know, we should learn from each other wherever we can. Uh, there is work that we have to do. I readily recognise that. But whether it's in construction, whether it's in procurement, whether it's in some of the innovation like uh, project bank accounts that I've spoken about, uh, we are doing uh, whatever we can within our powers to help the industry, and we will continue to do so. Thank you very much. And we now move to the next.